message. When a blessing becomes a curse, I, I think it, uh, it's no accident that they used the cell phones in that uh, children's sermon. Not that that, that was intentional by no means, but that yeah, I think it uh, leads in well to what uh, I'm going to share with you this morning. Um, I remember when cell phones came out, I thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread, you know, <laughs> hand in the pocket on the shirt and all those things. I remember my first cell phone, I was a policeman in Kingsport, and then I thought we were uptown because we got these big phones to put in our police cars, but the detectives got phones, and, and they, were, they were this big, you know, the big old huge bag phone thing, and, you know, it was a big old, you know, I thought we thought it was the greatest thing. But, you know, I've changed, uh, since I've changed my mind a little bit about cell phones, about whether or not they're a blessing or a curse, I think most of the time they become a curse because they don't have any peace <laughs> anymore uh, from the, the demands that the world places on us. And so what a wonderful lesson today uh, that we have here in this story <clears throat> when a blessing becomes a curse. Have you ever experienced that in your life? You thought you, you received something or something happened in your life and you, you just thought that was the greatest thing, it's the greatest blessing, but it turned out to be something just the opposite. It happens to us. I remember uh, reading a, a story and, and after I got to reading that story, I said, I wonder how often this happens. But it was uh, about a person who won the lottery. Um, I began to kind of do some research about that. You know, I found out some interesting things. Folks that have won the lottery and suddenly became wealthy overnight, uh, they didn't always fare so well. It was very interesting, actually. I, 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 I read stories of families turned inside out, broken up because of the money. Um, people uh, with legal problems, and yes, even people who... <coughs> Uh, because of their wealth, suddenly uh, fell into a debt problem. As a matter of fact, I, I was uh, looking and doing some research. Um, over in London, there's a, a wealth counselor over in London who says that nearly one-third of lottery winners encounter financial trouble within five years. And they enter, uh, within five years, about one-third uh, enter into bankruptcy. I don't know where she got her figure. What it shows is that uh, lottery winners may receive large sums of money. They may get those things annually, but they still don't have the skills necessary to be able to, to handle that sudden wealth. And even make investments that, uh, that bust and even puts them in worse condition than they were before they won. <coughs> what about our emotional well-being? Sometimes you think about uh, winning money uh, we, you know, it's going to bring us all this happiness when we get to be able to do, have all this freedom to do what we want to do. But according to the psychologists, the Shane Frederick and George Lowenstein, winning a lottery provides an initial sense of exhilaration, but this soon is replaced with the person's disposition as it was before they won. Their findings result in what I believe to be the truth. <coughs> that if you can't be happy poor, you'll never be happy rich. <coughs> and their studies show this to be, that a person who was, uh, you know, unhappy before they hit the lottery, they, were, they became unhappy afterwards. But people that were happy before were happy afterwards. <coughs> so it wasn't the money after all, was it? It's something within us that is the source for our happiness. I want to share this one quick story <clears throat> because it's really struck me. Uh, in 2002, it was on Christmas morning, 2002. Uh, the man's name is Jack Whitaker. Jack Whitaker woke up to perhaps the biggest Christmas gift imaginable. On Christmas Day, 2002, Jack Whitaker found out he'd won the Powerball jackpot lottery in the state of West Virginia. It was a whopping $315 million. Now, his story is a long, sordid one. But Jack would tell you today, 
And in the, the article, it was a 2020 news article I read, Jack's statement was, I wish I had torn it up. Meaning to take it. Because it cost Jack everything that he found dear and loved. That was his family. He was raising a granddaughter named Brandy. And circumstances to having all the money led to her uh, beginning a life of, of <coughs> drug abuse and addiction that ended in her death. Jack ended up being, having legal problems, he had drinking problems and gambling problems, all because he had the ability to be able to do those things with the money. What a story, what a sad story it was to read made-for-TV Christmas story that ended in tragedy. The loss of everything that this man held here. Now I want to tell you this, our, 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 our scripture story this morning has similar results. Here we have a man who our scripture says that uh, uh, in today's, in, in uh, Mark's version, the, the man comes, he's rich. If you read in the other gospels, you'll find also that he's described as being a younger person. And in one the version of the gospel of the same story, we'll also find that he was also a ruler, someone in authority. You would describe this person as somebody who had it all together, who was the society's ideal person. He had the money, he had the authority, the clout, and he had the, the age, the youth, to be able to enjoy all that he had. He was religiously conscious. You can, he had that conscience about him because if, if you read uh, the story, you'll see that he he, he come to Jesus. He, he knew there was some there was a religious uh, aspect about him. He had kept all the uh, the laws that uh, the Jewish laws, and so he was a good person. So it wasn't that he was out of the world and just was devoid of God. No, it was just the opposite. This was this was society's ideal person. Yet he had the astuteness. I will give him credit. He had the astuteness to realize that there was something missing from his life. <laughs> and he came to hear Jesus and to ask him the question, what can I do to have that eternal peace and life that you talked about? You heard the answer. Jesus says, do these things. And we know that Christ was reading his heart. And Jesus got right to the very heart of the matter. This man was struggling from the fact that his possessions were actually owning him. This man was struggling from the, the lack of priority in his life. God wasn't the priority, it was his property. It was his possessions. It was his riches. And what I don't want you to, to leave here this morning and, and going away from it, that, that, you know, we're to give everything we have away and that's going to be all right. That's not the point of the story. Please don't miss it. Because it's not just about the money. It's about what is the most important thing to you in your life. That's what it's about. It's not about how much money you have or don't have. It's about who is the number one person, the number one thing that your life rotates around. That's the point of the story. And for this young man, this young wealthy ruler, the blessings that God had bestowed upon him with, with his with his health, with his, his youth, with his authority, with his money. All those things were a blessing that became a curse for him because they led him away from having that primary relationship with God. And folks, that's when a blessing becomes a curse in our lives as well. This young, rich, ruler, the ideal person of society of the day suffered from, from what we struggle with oftentimes in our lives as well. We suffer from the problem of letting go. 
letting go of the secondary things of life and, and clinging to the primary things of life. Now, I know many of you have heard this. Uh, I think a lot of motivational speakers use this. And don't worry, I'm not going to preach another 15 minutes, okay? I'm going to, uh, don't worry about that. I want to, I'm going to quickly come to the point because it makes its own point. You, have you ever heard the, the, the story or the myth? I, think it's a, I don't think it's true, but it's a wonderful idea. The myth of the, uh, the monkey jar. You know, the, 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 the legend has it that the, uh, hunters over in Africa would, could hunt monkeys by they put a jar out there and they would put a banana or a peanut or whatever it was the monkey was wanting in that jar. But the jar had a it was very small and all they could do was barely get their hand in. But when they grasped the item, they could not get their hand out. And as the legend goes, that the monkey would be trapped there and would stay there and allow the hunter to actually come and capture them before they would let go of that prize and move their hand out of the jar and escape in the freedom. They would hang on, even if it meant death or captivity. Hang on. And folks, that's what this young man's problem was. He wanted to hang on to the things of this world. And he let go of the only thing that he really truly needed. What about us today? Are we hanging on? Hanging on to the things that want to pull us down. Hanging on to some uh, uh, sense of, of pride. Hanging on to some addiction. Are we hanging on to something today and we won't let go? And we're missing the very things that we need to bring us a continued, happy, successful life. Does that describe you this morning? I'd like to encourage you today to let it go. A lot of us don't know when to. I'd like to encourage you today to let go of all those things that would keep you from having that, that primary relationship with God. Let those things go and seek Christ. And if we do that, then our blessings will truly be a blessing. I want to invite you this morning that if you have uh, suffered from this problem that we see described to us in the scripture, why don't you come this morning? Maybe if you would come and let's close this service. But I want, to, I want to invite you to come today. Is there something in your life that you're hanging on to that's keeping you from the life that God has for you today? Is there something? Why don't you come and give it to him? Let go. And let God have all of you today. Did you do that? Let go and find the freedom and the joy that comes from following Jesus.